Are you up for a logo test? I have some new ones for you to test your brain again. Don't forget to keep track of your score so you can see how well you did. Okay, at first, I'll be showing you two logos. One correct one and one fake one. (laughs) You just have to tell me which one is the correct one. Deal? Let's go then. What about this logo? Everybody's favorite HBO. Yes, of course. It's this one. Next up, GTA 5, a computer game. Can you find the correct logo? Here it is. Did you get it? What about Vodafone? Can you see it? Correct. It's the right one. What do you have to say here? What's the correct Nirvana logo? Yes, it's this one. Now, Android. Nothing complicated. Which one is it? That's the left one. Boston Celtics, a basketball team. Can you spot the correct logo? Yes, this one seems right. Can you remember the correct Dolby logo, the sound system? Here it is. What do you say about Peugeot? Can you see the one and only? Yep, right here on the left. What about Uniqlo, the clothing brand? Find it. That's the one on the right. Patagonia, what's your call? Pick the right, and you're right, right, right. Think hard and find the correct logo of the Washington Commanders. Not sure if it helps, but they're a football team. So, what do you say? It's this one. Calvin Klein is super famous. Where's the correct logo? This is the one. What about Allianz, the insurance company? That's the one! Next up is the Thesaurus Dictionary. Can you see the right logo? It's this one. Mental Floss. Pick the right logo, please. Yeah, it's the left one. Change of task. I'll show you a logo and you have to name it. Do you think you know them all? (laughs) We'll see. Here's the first one. It's quite easy. Do you remember it? Correct. It's the New York Yankees, a baseball team. Great job. Not hard at all. Who is this woman? It's the woman featured in the logo of Columbia Pictures. I hope you got it right. This one is quite famous. That's Fairy, a dishwasher gel. Okay, do you know this brand? It's Lululemon. Can you remember where this bird comes from? Or maybe at least the name of this bird? That's a cardinal. And the team is the Arizona Cardinals. What do you say here? (laughs) 
That's UC Browser. What about this one? Pontiac, an American car brand. This one is quite simple, a flying baseball. So yeah, tell me which team it is. Of course, it's the Los Angeles Dodgers. What about this S? What does it stand for? That's CI, a Spanish car brand. This one is famous worldwide. Do you know this organization? That's the United Nations. Any thoughts here? That's Tree Hut, a personal care brand. Not knowing this one is almost illegal. Yes, it's 21 Pilots. You see it all the time. Can you recognize it? It's Pantene, of course, a shampoo. Do you know what this logo is? It's Chicago Cubs, the famous baseball team. Okay, this one's a bit harder. What do you say? It's the logo of Billie Eilish. Do you know this one? It's Swatch, a watch brand. I just removed the name. Does it ring a bell? Red Hot Chili Peppers, the band. Quite a fancy logo. What is it? The New Orleans Saints, a football team. Okay, a needle. Hmm, do you know the brand? It's Cole Haan. It's a luxury footwear brand. Look, that's a great one. Any ideas? That's Starlink. It's an internet constellation operated by SpaceX that delivers internet to remote areas. This one for sure looks fancy. So, ideas? That's Parker. They make those crazy expensive pens. Everyone knows this penguin, but wait, where did you see it? On books, it's the logo of Penguin Random House, a huge publisher. Okay, here's a GE logo. What does it mean? General Electric. This one is quite famous. Do you know it? It's the New England Patriots, a football team from Boston. Do you know this logo? It's Roxy. Easy peasy, what is it? It's Google Classroom. A logo you probably know because everybody does. What is this? Queen, <laughs> the band. This one is hard, but definitely worth a try. Any guesses? It's the World Bank. 
This one is almost like TikTok, but different, of course. What is it? That's likey. Do you have any clue what this is? That's the logo of the Los Angeles Chargers, a football team. Do you know this organization? That's the logo of the International Monetary Fund. What about this one? Do you recognize the logo? That's Happen, a dating app. Any thoughts here? It shouldn't be too hard. Cat related, obviously. It's Sheba, a cat food brand. I bet you know it. That's Phillips. Maybe not the most famous one, but the ball and the letter give enough hints. Los Angeles Clippers, a basketball team. What do you think this logo is? That's Macmillan Publishers, a huge book publisher. What about this logo? Have you ever seen it before? That's the logo of the European Union. Do you recognize this one? That's CapCut, a video editing app. Any thoughts on this one? Yeah, it's AutoZone. What do you say about this one? Any ideas? Pittsburgh Steelers, another football team for you. And now it's time for the final type of task. It's the hardest one. I'll show you just a little piece of a logo, and you have to recognize it. Do you think you can manage? Let's check. Here's the first one for you, a very easy one. Any guesses? It's Safari. Yeah, nothing too hard again. You know it well. What do you say? That's the Olympics. Yeah, I'm being way too nice, but keep enjoying it while it lasts. <laughs> what is it? That's Wikipedia, of course. Another easy one for you. Hit it. Yep, that's Metallica. Now things are getting harder. What is this? That's Alcatel. Good. Any thoughts here? That's Ray-Ban. Okay, I'll give you a break. Where is this piece from? That's Toys R Us, of course. Super simple. You have my respect if you know it. That's the World Health Organization. So, any thoughts? The Brooklyn Nets basketball team, of course. Nothing hard. What is this logo?
Aha, that's Lacoste. Any ideas about where these squares come from? Aha, that's GoPro. Did you get it right? Do you have any thoughts on this one? That's corn. Tell me what this is. That's Funimation. Do you recognize this face? Yes, you have definitely seen it on Planters Peanuts. Okay, I have to admit I wouldn't guess it myself, but maybe you will. Trust me, you know this brand very well. Faber-Castell, they produce stationaries. So, how'd you do? Let me know how many points you got in the comments below. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Neil Armstrong had been getting ready for his mission on the moon for over three years. To resist microgravity conditions, he had to learn how to walk sideways by being strapped and suspended at an angle in trying to walk along walls. His limits were tested through an intense diet and sleep regimen. Since in space, he would only have beef and vegetables, previously dehydrated and stuffed into a package. Back in the day, astronauts had to experience the desert, jungle, open sea, and Arctic survival training. These days, it's a lot more structured. But back then, it was more of a let's drop this person in the middle of nowhere with no supplies and see if they make it. Before landing on the moon, he had to gather and study rock samples in the Grand Canyon, explore ancient volcano formations in the Nevada National Security Site, and look into gas and lava vents, lava lakes, and pit craters in various locations in Hawaii. On July 20, 1969, Armstrong was given a hearty breakfast before blastoff. Steak, eggs, toast, juice, and coffee. He received what doctors call a low-residue meal which means he wouldn't have to go to the bathroom soon after. It took him 109 hours and 42 minutes to reach the surface of the moon, in an area called the Sea of Tranquility. He had to travel 240,000 miles to get there. The crew could have gone for the Ocean of Storms or the Central Bay, but this place was chosen for landing because it had good visibility, was relatively smooth, and was easily reachable with as little propellant as possible. When he was at about 500 feet above the surface of the moon, Armstrong had to maneuver the spacecraft manually to make sure they wouldn't land in a dangerous crater. He continued to hover for about a minute and a half, moving it sideways until he felt comfortable to land. As soon as his device landed safely, he immediately radioed to Mission Control, located in Houston, Texas. The now famous message, The Eagle has landed. Steadily, he went down the lunar module's ladder. While a television camera was attached to the craft to record his progress, the camera also transmitted the signal back to Earth, where hundreds of millions of people were anxiously waiting. At precisely 10.56 p.m. EDT on the same day, Armstrong placed his feet onto the lunar soil, saying, That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The schedule said that the astronaut needed to sleep before the first moonwalk, but he chose to go outside earlier than planned, since he obviously couldn't sleep. If Armstrong had walked on the moon without special equipment to breathe, he would have smelled a weird odor, sort of musty and sulfuric. Still, he had the chance to smell it when he returned to the lunar module. The thing is, the dirt had clung to his feet, so the odor spread all over the cabin. He described it as wet fireplace ashes, or how the air smells after firework shows. Who would have thought you needed to pack a scented candle when going to the moon? Apart from the people that have since made it to the moon, no one ever got the chance to know precisely what the crew was smelling. Even during that first mission, 
when moon soil and rock samples were transported to labs in airtight containers? Once they were opened back on Earth, surprisingly, the smell was gone. He also felt the surface of the moon to be fine and powdery, but said he had no difficulty in moving around. One other member of his crew joined him about 20 minutes later. The whole moonwalk took a little over two hours. During this time, Armstrong and his teammates set up various devices on the surface of our satellite. One was meant to precisely measure the exact distance from there to Earth, by timing how long it took for a laser beam to travel from Earth to the lunar surface and back. Another meant to measure moonquakes and potential meteor impacts, which leads us to the discovery that the moon was pretty alive after all. We know today that the largest moonquakes are much weaker than the largest earthquakes, though their movements can last for up to an hour, way longer than on Earth. They managed to gather somewhere around 50 pounds of rock in soil samples. They also snapped many photographs of the terrain, where they also planted a U.S. flag. The astronaut even got the chance to catch up with President Richard Nixon, for less than a minute though. The final thing on the list for Armstrong was to go for a walk to what is now known as East Crater, 65 yards east of the lunar module. It was the greatest distance traveled from the spacecraft on that specific mission, approximately the length of half a football field. As soon as his tasks were done, Armstrong went back into the lunar module and safely closed the hatch to get some sleep. While preparing for liftoff, Armstrong and his crew discovered that, because of their chunky spacesuits, they managed to break the ignition switch for the ascent engine. No big deal, they thought. So they used a part of a pen to push in the circuit breaker to start the launch sequence. At 1.54 p.m., the famous Eagle began to ascend. Apart from the scientific equipment installed on the surface of the moon, a plaque was also left there. It read, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. Years later, Armstrong said that NASA limited their time on the moon because they didn't know how the spacesuits would handle the moon's extreme temperatures as high as 260 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to as low as 280 degrees Fahrenheit below zero at night. Things got a bit more complicated when Armstrong landed back on Earth. Since he had been exposed to unknown space particles, the result? He and his team had to be placed in planetary protection quarantine on their return. As soon as their space capsule safely splashed down in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th, that specific quarantine for the Apollo 11 astronauts is one of the reasons why we have microwaves in our kitchens today. When they first returned from the moon, they initially spent their first few days in a mobile quarantine facility, or MQF. Sure, the MQF featured comfortable chairs, bunks, a toilet, and showers, but it didn't leave a lot of space for fancy cooking. Since there was no room for a standard oven or grill, and to also reduce the potential fires that might have occurred. NASA had to get creative. That's how the original countertop microwave oven was developed, to easily help astronauts get their meals without the hustle of a fully equipped kitchen. These days you can see that first microwave in a museum in Oakland, California. After returning to Earth, Armstrong claimed he would never reach for the stars again. But he didn't stop exploring though. Back in 1985, he joined a professional team of other greatest explorers to the North Pole. He was joined by mountaineer Edmund Hillary, aviator Steve Fawcett, and photographer Patrick Morrow, reaching the pole on April 6, 1985. Armstrong claimed he wanted to see what the Earth's icy pole looked like from the ground since he had only seen it from the surface of the moon. The Apollo 11 mission was nevertheless unforgettable for Armstrong since. In 2015, the Smithsonian Institution uncovered that he had kept hidden a cloth bag full of small parts from the lunar module. It included his waist tether, some utility lights, and their brackets, an emergency wrench, and the optical sight that was mounted above Armstrong's window of the space module. 
It also contained the data acquisition camera that recorded the iconic footage of Armstrong taking his small step on the moon. Armstrong kept it to himself for many years until his widow Carol eventually found it. He even kept it a secret from his official biographer, who at many times asked if he had kept any memorabilia from his famous mission. He didn't sneak those objects back on Earth, though. He just mentioned it to be a bunch of trash he wanted to bring back. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.